Welcome to episode 9 of the Houdini VEX series. Now that we've talked about functions like XYZ dist and near points, we can get into more detail on how those functions are able to receive their information. Both of them use a method called point cloud. A point cloud is a set of points in space that hold data, in our case attributes. In the Houdini docs under VEX functions, you can filter point cloud functions. We have around 37 functions associated with point clouds. They often have the prefix PC. One of them is PC Open, the most common PC function since quite a lot of other PC functions require its output as their inputs. PC Open opens a PC file and writes in all points in the point cloud. Basically, the function requires a vector position and a float radius, and all the points in that radius are the points that get written into that file. Now you can then iterate over the points with PC iterate or PC filter the points for a certain attribute that is interpolated by their distances to the import vector position. Since there are many functions and different ways to use point clouds, I want to narrow it down to the most common ones. We start by discovering the combination of PC open and PC filter. Then we use PC open with PC iterate to run over each point in our point cloud and PC import channel data from each point to calculate with. And finally, we will use PC num found to get the number of points found in a point cloud. Inside Houdini, let's start with an example. We create a grid and scatter some points onto it. That already is basically a point cloud, so a set of points in space. Now let's give it some data, for example, a color gradient. Uh, we can set it to Z, compute range, and maybe give it a different color. Okay, so now let's add one point in space, and we want that point to open a point cloud, and then from the closest five points to that point, we want to receive the interpolated color data, and then set this to our one point. And we can do that with the point cloud. So let's create an attribute wrangle. As our first input, we use our point. As the second input, our point cloud. So now we need to first open a PC file. So we use intended equals PC open. Now our point cloud is the first input, but in here the second point. So our point cloud, then it requires a, a string position data and also our attribute position and a radius and max points. So we need to create channels for radius and max points first, so we can easily control um, control those. So first radius is a float. Let's just call it make float channel. And also we have int max points is an integer. All right, so this PC open now for our point looks in this point cloud and let's say we want to look at the five closest points in this specific radius, but the PC open itself does nothing to our geometry. It just has a handle which contains the PC file and this can be handed to other functions. So let's say we want to get the color data from those four or five points in our attributes. So we can use uh, we can create a new vector color, and now use the PC filter function, which requires the handle, so basically our PC file, and also um, a string attribute name in this case CD, and let's set this as our points color. So our CD is our color. So you can see now that our one point has the interpolated value of those five points closest to him. So if we now for example, push our point over here, it got the color data from here. And we can also set it to here and it has the color data from here. If we now set it to very far away, you can see that here our radius is not big enough. So it doesn't find any points in this radius. But if we set our radius higher, it will have five points in this radius and can now receive color data. Let's have a look at a second example. Um, this time we also use the PC open, but then we iterate over each point. 
So just before we filtered uh, the attributes, but now we want to run over each point the handle can find in this specific radius and import some uh, data from them. So what we did, we still have our grid with a lot of points and also we have this one point and it just uh, it works very well as a demonstration purpose. So in the attribute wrangle we have our Z input zero, the one point, and the first input is our point cloud. And now let's see what we did. So first we uh, created some variables we will need. And then we also added two channels, one for the radius and the max point the PC open requires for its point cloud. So we opened a point cloud, called it handle, and now in a while loop, so the PC iterate in order to go over each point in this specific radius, we want to have a while and then the PC iterate function in it. So it will always return one. But when it's at the last point, after the last point, it will return zero, and then we are out of the while. This is how that works. So the PC iterate just requires the handle. And in here, we can now be sure that, for example, we have max points five in a radius of one. So in this while loop, we will go over the five closest points in here. Now with the PC import for each of those points, we uh, again need the handle and we can simply um, ask for an attribute and store it in a variable. We, we create it up here. We can just store for each point the color in here. And the, I do the same with the position and with the ptnum. And you can see that I have the prefix pc, so we know these values come from our point cloud. And now I want to have um, our point connected to the brightest of the points. You can see that it's never going to the dark points and connects, but always is searching for the brightest point he can find in his uh, point cloud. So in order to do that, we can go over each. So if our PC color red channel is bigger than our color red, the first one it goes over it is zero, so it will always be bigger. Then it stores our color, position, and ID we got from our PC input in these variables. So the next time it runs over each point, it will ask the same question, is it bigger or not? If it's bigger, it will uh, overwrite them. So in the end, we will, can filter that way our maximum value of the points in our point clouds. Now we can simply add a point on that position. With the add prim, we can create a line between those. And then with add cd, we set the color we filtered before. So now, if we move our point around, it will look in the specific radius and is searching for the brightest point and will connect to it. So if we now, for example, use a bigger radius and more points, it will look for, then you can see that now it will search even more points and look for the brightest one and connect to that. Let's have a look at the third example. For that, we use a grid and scatter points onto it. In our attribute wrangle, this time we use a very high max point, since we want to look at all the points, it doesn't matter how many there are, in this specific radius. So the radius is 0 0.4. Now, with the PC num found, we can get the number of points found in a point cloud. Uh, we do that, we run over each point. So each point we run and in the radius of four, we have all the points in there, and this gives us the number of points in there. So if we now fit this value and channel ramp it, we can create a density attribute. Maybe let's use the density or number of points. And let's visualize that attribute. This is, these are the number of points found for each specific point in that radius. And uh, if we now set that to color with the channel ramp and fit it, you can create yourself a density attribute. So when there are, for example, different seed, when there are less points close to the point, it will have a lower um, color value. If there are a lot of points, we have a higher value. So there are many more functions with the PC and you really can be very creative on how to use it and fix a lot of problems if you know these functions.
In the next episode, let's have a look at creating our own functions and extend the capabilities of Houdini with it.